To the top right of the map of Daybreak in uh, the orange, we have the NS Hosa player. We have him with, uh, well, uh, regular O2. Tenex Suoshin. His last that's hope here, he has to That is game. actually Jakji and that's Suoshin. Uh, Suoshin is starting to the bottom left. Yep. But, well, the Terran player here is down two games. And uh, his opponent is starting to the bottom left of the map, going for the extractor here, trick here to go to the oversupply. We have the Xenix player. It is loser called. Tenex Suoshin. And by the way, uh, just a quick fun fact regarding the last game, uh, and I want to I want to uh, thank Burp who uh, messaged me on Twitter. If you have some additional information uh, for one of us, then you can always tweet us at at Caldor or at Proxy Wolf. Vines apparently went up to 24 gates during the EG Masters Cup against Bix. So Vines Hosotjakji. Right, Here's again the intro for yeah, Jakji. Correcting yeah, the yeah. intro there, but anyway, go on. Yeah, so pretty interesting. 24 gates uh, in his match against uh, Bix in the EG Masters Cup, so that's actually pretty crazy. Mines really likes his gateway play. And well, now we have a very, very interesting uh, match at hand. I talked already a little bit about how the situation in uh, today's group just unfolds here. And uh, Suo Shin played very well against his last Terran opponent. He did a great job against Polt with a Roach Baneling attack that knocked Polt nearly out of the game. Even though the TSL player tried to come back into the game, it was really, really hard for him to pull off. Jakji, on the other hand, he lost his recent matchups against Zerg. He lost against Nest at Iron Squid with 3-2. He had to uh, well get yeah, to GG against Curious at the KSL just recently, and uh, he also lost against Symbol in Code A with 2 0. Yeah, so, Jockey is not, bit he's of a not problem looked here. His, uh, his best uh, since his GSL championship. That was like definitely the peak of his career. He's from Iran and he loves StarCraft 2. Okay. Thank you, GSL. Okay. Well, thank you, nameless person from Iran. Pretty cool here with a lot of fans today in the studio. I really like it. We have a huge audience uh, at the uh, at Mukdong right now. Yeah, actually a huge audience. Uh, one of the biggest I've ever seen for an up and down match. It's always good to see fans coming in here. I think there's some kind of uh, Diablo 3 giveaway today as well. Some kind of a raffle. Yeah, you guys should have been here. You're like sitting at home going, oh, is that so? I'm like, yeah. Do you know what's really funny? I went to the supermarket, like a small one, uh, just yesterday, and they sell Diablo 3 yep. at just a normal supermarket here. You don't they even have to go to some, some kind of stores. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The convenience store supermarkets here in Korea, they actually sell Diablo 3. Yeah, I heard that in Taiwan, the convenience stores sell StarCraft 2 as well. Uh, I hope so. Ton of ton of uh, fans in Taiwan for StarCraft and other games. So I heard that, like, hold this thought, man. We are going to see Overlord hunting going on here. He just misses the Overlord. I know, man. This is something that Chachi is, like, known for. The crowd's actually going wild. I, this uh, Overlord defense right now. No, like, I guess they're really excited about the patch. It was actually not the Overlord. I was just, I was just wondering, okay, what exactly are they doing? And they turned around. Uh, I turned around and watched the Korean stream, and uh, well, the big screen, and they just showed some fans with uh, signs in Korean. So oh, okay. that's why they were clapping. I was like, well, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I was like, yeah, it's exciting, like, He's but it's stop not the that Overlord. exciting. Yeah. Oh, this is pretty exciting. He does see that third base. That's. Yeah really huge. Normally you don't get to see that. Is Suishin actually trying to pull off the same strategy that he used in the game against Polt? He could definitely do yeah, it, but... He is. Well, so I mean, he's... Uh, he, so he far, could. He's, he's going up to, to just... He, he would need additional extractors, he would yeah. need the Roach one, would have to start it very soon. But it's, there, uh, there it is. It is. Yep. it is definitely an option. It's some. It's a build that he can use here, and it looks like he's going to go for exactly the same Joshiro scenario. Joshiro is going three racks here. He's actually not even taking the factory, so that's going to make it a lot easier for him to defend this. If he scouts it in time, he should be able to get Marauders out. And if he bunkers as well. Yeah. You know, he's not going to have siege tanks at all. That's not going to be something he can rely on. It's just will not happen. It hasn't even started a factory yet. And I think you're right, man. With the third base going down at this timing, the Roach War and the, the Zergling speed that we're seeing, I would be surprised if we do not see another Extractor coming down um, and a Baneling Nest. It could also Can you be do this off of two Extractors, actually, like with only Roaches, I guess, and not go for the Banelings? Yeah, he's skipping the Banelings this time. It's just a little bit of a... I was just about to say that it's basically just a, another variation of what he did against Paul. He's not committing too much gas to it. He's uh, focusing a little bit more on his economy. And just this push... Oh, he's getting it after all. It's pretty delayed here. Yeah. And he's just going to do it with two gases. 
he must have timed this out like perfectly if he actually gets the uh, I expected the what you usually see is you get the bailing nest when the roaches just start so he must have timed this out like perfectly but with the speed for the zerglings it would have, I would have been surprised to only see roach zergling that's can still be quite strong but the bailings are what makes this push really beefy oh he's gonna spot this two roaches get spotted really as well as the zerglings now as the units on the watchtower see them immediately he needs to start bunker. more bunkers yeah two bunkers one more on the low ground and one going up on the high ground as well here need to start marauder production as well he's has the SCVs now in position to repair here come the banelings he's morphing them it's exactly the build he used against pole against pole it worked like a charm is Jokji is Jokji dying to this? His whole his whole code S uh, life is on the line here. Oh yes, it is. He's already pulled everything out. He's not going to try to hold it the natural. In fact, he's even pulling his units in the lower bunker out as well. Is he going for the lift off here? The banelings are not connecting. Very smart choice. Oh, there is nothing. He's walking up the ramp and taking down the marines, and he cannot bust through. No, a, a lot of hesitation there. Uh, he's another couple of circling with the low ground. Great positioning by Jokshi as well. He's going to hold this really, really well. I like his position here. Too. That's something that MMA did in the past as well. Just deciding to uh, kind of sack his expansion uh, for the time being and uh, be sure that he is not losing too much. And the worker count, he only lost four SCVs. Actually, uh, that's all that he lost at this point. But still, we have the third base now for Suo Shin. Yeah, and he's droning up again, getting his lair. He's got double Evo Chambers on the way. But the advantage that Suo Shin has is not as huge as in the game against Paul. The factory is done, and from here, he's he's already started medevac production. He's going to start tanks. Um, he doesn't have a third command center, so I'm wondering if he's going to try to hit a two-base timing and try to attack the third, but I just don't think it's going to work. After being a little bit behind, losing so much mining time, it's hard to really hit that timing like you would normally want to. Looks like he's actually going to go out with these medevacs and marines. Again, though, with the, the Zerling count that Suo has out right now, I, I think he'll be able to hold this. He'll actually be able to see it in time, build up a few more Zerlings and hold it no problem. And Spire is on the way, so he, he's going to lose the ability to use drops, just like we saw in his game against Pole. There's the command center going down, though. He's not really going to commit to this. He really likes the style and you can actually see that he played this build over and over again. It looks really refined and he knows exactly how to fall back into his macro mode. We have him with the 20 supply advantage, but it's going to be a tough battle. Jokchi defended quite well. He realized that he was not able to hold the low ground and therefore sacked the buildings that he had. Uh, kind of two supply depots and that's basically all that he killed. Um, a few marines as well, two bunkers, but in the end he did not do the amount of damage that he was able to pull off against Pold. We have Blue Flame coming out for Jokchi now, who is also going for the armory and now the engineering bay. It's really interesting to uh, see him go for the Blue Flame upgrade here. He's not going for a mech strategy. The drop in the main base is not successful as yeah, Suishin is in position. Down. But these, these Blue Flame Hellions will help him a lot against... Well, uh, against Zerglings. Against Zerglings. I was also going to have some harassment though. potential with it, but... I would have expected tanks. Yeah, me too. I'm a little bit surprised with this. But it, when you see this Zergling heavy composition that so many Zergs are going for right now, the tanks are not as useful if your, if your Marine splits against the Banelings are actually decent enough. I'm not sure how this is going to play out. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, people have done this in the past, especially Slayers, Terrans, um, have done this in the past. Like, for example, if he had a few, few Hellions here, he could fight this, but now he does not. He's going to have to run away. There are not quite enough Mutas, actually, I, I think, to target all these medevacs down. He's going to try to, though. Uh, but he's definitely getting a few of them. Uh, the first one is dead, and he's getting all these medevacs. He's getting the Marines unloading, and here comes the Zerglings, but he has to be careful as the Roach is not in position yet. And he's committing with the Roaches and throwing them away. Uh, of course the stim though, and oh, he could have gotten these mutas perhaps, but he decides not to commit. Jachi is down 30 supply. He does and not have the third yeah, base he's in position not even yet. made it into an orbital or a planetary yet. It's just a, a regular naked command center right now. I think he will get the planetary upgrade as soon as it's on the low ground. That's the only reason that I can come up with why he didn't get the orbital upgrade. He's blocked by a Zergling burrow though, so he's going to have to go and use a scan down there. Very, very frustrating for any Terran to have to do this. It costs money to use a scan. It costs a lot of time. He's losing a lot right here. And during this, while well, his units are out of position, Suho is actually moving into the natural. And Suho has a pretty good creep spread. He has the Mutalist. And this time he's committing a lot more to Mutalists. 
and he's getting the armor upgrade. He really wants to fight here, and as soon as he has the additional ones that he just built and the upgrade, he can start to fight with the turrets. Yeah. He does not have plus one for the mutas, though. Only the armor upgrade. Which means, it, basically, that he wants to commit to a longer game of mutas. If you go for the attack upgrade, it means you want to fight with them for like a shorter period of time. Target the units down with them and then get out. But in this case, he wants to actually use them as more of a fighting group that's going to be a later game composition for him. It's also going to help him with his Broodlords later as well. Here we go! Muta's coming in, targeting down these Medivacs. The, the Medivacs are catching the units of the natural. At the low ground, we have another attack. Here comes Suhoshin, committing with his failing circlings, moving into the third phase, and everything that Jakshi has is just dying. Another set of circlings is now attacking the mineral line at the natural, and this looks like the final blow to Jakshi, who's dropping in supply down to 70. What? What? I, I just, I don't know why his build here, I mean, it's like he he just didn't have enough. Like, if he had tanks, I think it would have held us a little bit easier, but I didn't expect him to die like this, to be honest with you, Kaldor. I, I thought he would have more, but he made a lot of Marauders, and I think that's something, again, that's not that useful against this type of Mutalist composition. And he didn't have Siege Tanks. Siege Tanks yeah, would no have helped tanks. him so much more because he did not... Well, what did the Blue Flamelons actually do in this Nothing. game? Nothing. I mean, they killed a few Zerglings, but not enough to change the tide of battle. 33 Banelings morphing right now, and I think he's just going to kill him. Yeah, he's looking just so strong now. Even the third base is now moving back into uh, the uh, to the natural. He has not the economy to pull this off. All these Banelings! There are thousands of them, like 50 in total to be exact, but uh, he's killing the, the post on the low ground. He's just forcing Jakshi in the defensive again, and he expands, he takes a fourth, he gets the infestation pit, the plus two armor upgrade for his Mutalus. He is playing this so smart. As you said, Wolf, he prepared for this matchup like crazy, yep. and it helps him so much. Well, there's the Mutalists are going to go into the main. There are turrets really well positioned, though. He's trying to distract the Marines so he can run into the natural here. The Blue Flame Hellion's actually doing a decent job now, but it's just not enough. Banley's going for the Marines on the ramp, wow. as well as cornering these final Hellions. Oh and my god. He's holding on a little bit longer, but I don't know how much longer. Oh, that was actually a great engagement for that was, Jachi. That was awesome. He killed all the Banelings without losing too much. But at this point, Suhoshin... Hive Tech is on the way. Yeah, exactly. 70 to 35 workers. He has the fourth base up right now. He could even start a fifth in the middle of the map. Suhoshin basically has as many workers as Jachi has units in total. Yeah. Or at least supply in total for sure. We have now Infestors on the way, Pathogen Glance, plus two armor for the flies is halfway done. The Hive Tech is en route, he's uh, making sure that he spreads his creep a little bit further. He has uh, four bases, he's mining mainly gas from one of them. There was a little bit of an attack to the top left, but still it did not kill the hatch. And now we have 30 workers killed in total while the third Here base we go. is on the low He's guns. trying to get up the ramp, but ah, this time he does. Depots. Banelings are not going to do anything down at the natural. They're completely cleaned up. And in fact, it's a really good trade again for Jachi with his Blue Flame Hellions. This attack did almost nothing. He's killing a few workers, but the fact of the matter is he's keeping Jachi in his base. Now he's going to attack the command center on the right side, which was not able to lift. He's just making sure that he does not mine from the third base. And as long as Jachi can't really establish a third, a mining third, this game is going to end in Suhoshin's favor, and he knows it. That's exactly what he tries to do, and for good reason. And once again, a burrowed circling, he forces another scan, and the mule that he could just call down is now uh, completely worthless. This this is looking bad. I mean, he's actually having to land his orbital next to the Zerling to use a scan to kill the Zerling so he can lift it again. Uh, Suho, he's I feel, down to 22 Harvesters, Wolf. I feel he could wait a little bit longer before doing his next attack. Uh, but he's he's got the Infestors in this. If he actually catches the army of Joshi on... If Joshi's moving out and gets caught, he's going to be in trouble, and he will. He will catch him. The Fungals are immediately in position at the same time now. The Mutalists are chasing down the Medivax. And here's Joshi dropping down to 58 supply. And... Well, he tries to hold on here, catches a few investors, but the reinforcements, they stream in. Jakchi is about to drop down to Kode. It looks like it, man. He has no real answer for this. He does have his third mining, but for how long? With more Zerglings running in here, he's going to have to pull his SCBs again. He just dropped a ton of mules. It's so much energy spent that he's not going to get a return on. He does clean up the wings. He's dropping additional mules, but he's lost so much mining time. 
And again, like the supply gap kind of stays about the same because Jachi's trading really cost efficiently. In fact, the units lost for the Zerg two thousand more, but it's it's just it's not enough. He cannot he cannot continue to do this while the Zerg is starting to bank up resources. I'm really surprised we don't have a fifth base though for Suho. Uh, he's getting the Ultralist tech out. He doesn't have a fifth base though, and Jachi on three bases can continue to trade with these really cost efficient units. That's something that that's actually that's actually perfectly correct. The problem is that now his bases are about to be mined out. So even though he has a lot more drones, he cannot really perfectly saturate the bases that he's got because he's mining from three. He has like seventy. It's still possible, but at the natural, there are not a lot of mineral patches left. So getting a fifth base would be a good thing. But well, regarding his economy, he's on 184 supply against 90. Jokshi's gonna kill this hatchery, man. I, I actually don't well, think so. Well, maybe not. He is turning around in time. As soon as there's a fungal and he's trying to yeah, flank. Yeah, now he's going to catch him. He flanks here. Great positioning by Suho. Yeah, yeah there's a fungal only catching a few units, but that's all that he that needs. That was the last the hope queens. for Jokji. He really committed to this to kill that yeah. hatchery. Did G -G. not work. GG. Jokji is out of code as he is in code A. And Suho, he's on 2 1 in this group. Well done, well done. Well played here. This is a tough, tough break for Jogchi. He's going to have to try again next season to get into Code S. And he may even lose in Code A now in his first round. Someone who was at once a GSL champion was not able to continue his reign here. He's actually fallen down so low. In fact, he's done what many second place GSL finalists do, where they fall down and fall out of Code A. But he himself was the champion and is doing the same thing, falling all the way down to Code A, struggling in this group. Having some tough opponents though, even so, he's, he's done, he's out. The one thing that I'm curious about at this point is the next game of, um, of Suo Shin. He's up against Ryang, and I'm very sure that by now Ryang will have had a close look at the build that Suo Shin uses. He saw it against Polt, he saw it against Jakji, and I am very, very sure that Ryang will prepare against the potential Roach Baneling bus. Yeah, and he's not going to hesitate to make the bunkers. We even did saw. Did Suoshin account for that? Do you think that he has a build that he will use in the third game that differs from what he used just now? Or will he really try to stick to the same build again? I don't know, but I'm thinking that on dual site, it's a good map to do that build on again, but I think he's not going to do it a third time. Then he's he actually playing against Ryang on Antigua. Oh, okay. So the game will be, uh, we have Vines against Paul coming up next, oh, and then okay, it's okay. Uh, Suo Shin against Ryang. So I was looking at the wrong map. on Antigua, that we will see it again, is, is a map where you can do the Roach Baneling attack, but it's as soon as you, as soon like as you get on one map. Siege Tank on the high ground, it's over. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll do it on that map, definitely not. But it's, it's a map that's going to be pretty tough in, in general yeah. for our Zerg player, so... We'll see. I mean, he's looked dominant so far. Even though in the last game he did the same build, Jachi was prepared. He lost almost nothing. He had to lift for a little while. But his transition is the best part of, of how he does this. Yeah. His timing is, is solid, but his transition to the third base, how many drones he makes, his Spire transition. He's transitioning to Spire during a time where hardly anyone is going Spire. Almost everyone's going Infestors. I'm really liking his play so far today in, the, in this group. The next game is going to be uh, very important for um, uh, Polt and Vines. If Polt loses, he's still not out of it just yet. He can hope for a three-way tie situation uh, um, with, uh, or for a tie situation in general with 2-2. But if uh, Vines takes the next game, then he is in Code S. He only has to win one more game in order to uh, be in Code S for sure. So, yeah, if he takes this. Actually, looking at it, even if he wins the game, there could be some crazy scenario where he... No, he will be in Kodas. Sorry. I just I just thought about it for a second and I went to the last games, the next games that we had and saw the, the results. So if he wins, he's in Kodas and uh, well, we'll find out in uh, about five minutes and then we're back with Vines against Polt.